Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the class. Ya regresé. Very good. Sí, estaba viendo que no había estado en clase, pero pues me alegra que esté de regreso y trate de no faltar más para que le den las horas, ¿verdad? Sí, lo que pasa es que por el trabajo, que ayer a las 11 vine. Imagínense. La vez pasada vine a las 10 y media de día de la unión. That's not good. Bueno, lo bueno es que ya está de regreso y pues esperamos de que ya, eh, ya, no, ya no haya más faltas. Igual pues esta semana eh, tenemos clases normal, la siguiente vamos a tener vacación y la otra continuamos. Ah, vacación. ¿Qué día vamos a empezar? Eh, toda la otra semana. Ah, de veras. Ajá. Ah, no sabía. Esta semana que viene y la otra. No, esta semana que viene nada más. La siguiente ah, sí vamos a continuar. Ajá. Ah, ok, entiendo. No lo sabía. Ok, good. Pues, thank you. Vamos a esperar a los demás compañeros. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.
I don't have too much problem um, with pronunciation. Hello. With pronunciation right. on what word? Good, good evening, teacher. Aquí. Ah, okay. I, I read it. <laughs> yes. ah, okay. Good evening. How good are you? Evening. You're fine. Thank you. And very, you? Good. very well. Here, ready to start. All right. Okay. Good. Perfect. Let's wait just a few more minutes. One more minute just to wait for the rest of the people. Great. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. Today is Thursday. No, it's Wednesday, I'm sorry. And then we're going to start with the platform, of course. Hold on a second. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So this is the class that we are recording today. And uh, we're going to, well, there is the question for today. So you can actually, answer that one to check how it goes. And we are going to continue with the attendance, uh, of course. Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Presentation. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chévez. Present teacher. Okay. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Presente. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Presente. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ophelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good evening. <clears throat> Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. <laughs> Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Good evening, present. Good evening. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernandez Iraeta. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class of today. We're going to continue talking about warehousing, logistics, and everything that is related to this one. I know that for some of you, the topic is not um, that, how can I say? It's something that you don't know very much. But it's a good thing that we are learning English and logistics, right? So 
So that is nice. So we're going to start. And hold on a second, this cut. We're going to start with this little article that we have here supply chain logistics top five warehouse challenges on how to overcome them. What is a challenge, everybody? Challenge. <laughs> Somebody's happy. So, what is a challenge? Uh huh. Maybe this situation when you prove your ability or a skill about a specific. Uh, <laughs> specific challenges <laughs> okay good yeah I'm challenge sorry. it's like a competition it might be a competition okay yes. okay good you know this is a very nice activity because sometimes i mean we know the word but sometimes how to explain it in english is kind of difficult but it's the same as in spanish the problem is that you look for the words right i mean in spanish if i say what is a tv you can say the description of a TV in many ways, right? But when it comes to English, you say, oh, how, how am I going to explain this in a way that everybody understands, right? So that is the challenge. <laughs> so yes, a challenge is when you have an obstacle or something hard that you need to do. And uh, well, you face it, right? You you say this is a challenge, this is difficult, it's hard, or it's complicated, it's complex. You don't have time. There are many ways to describe a challenge, and you face the challenge, of course. And what is overcome? Uh huh. What is to overcome? Anybody? When you get the challenges? Yeah, when you beat, when you defeat the challenge, right? When you have a challenge, but you defeat that one, when you go through the challenge and you success, when you do it, that is to overcome. So you can overcome a problem, a challenge, or anything like that. So we're just going to speak about top five challenges regarding logistics, uh, supply chains, and warehouse. Uh, let's see. Carla, could you please read the first one? It says, when manufacturers. OK, teacher, I'm sorry. My neighborhood have a party. Oh, don't worry. I we are on our way. We're going to be there in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. And we knock on the door and let's dance a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Supply chain and logistics. Top five warehouse challenges and how to overcome them. When manufacturers don't have full visibility to their inventory, they face the problem of either running of up of a stock at the wrong time or carrying too much stock and thus decreasing cash flow while increasing expenses to warehouse extra material. Very good. What did you understand on this one, Carla? Mm, when they customer have um, ha, uh, uh, do a new acquisition that new inventory, the, the warehouse uh, service have uh, extra material and increasing expenses for this space for rent, for management, a new product. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. So let's review. When manufacturers don't have full visibility to their inventory, so this is the first problem, right? When they don't have full visibility, so everybody needs to know what's going on, how much inventory, how much stock do you have, 
Uh, actually, I have a question for you. And actually, that is the question that is on the platform today. What is the difference between inventory and stock? Do you remember? We checked that, I guess, yesterday or the day before that one. What is the difference between stock and inventory? It's not seen teacher. It's not. Repeat the question, teacher, please. What is the difference between stock and inventory? The inventory is mm. all, all the, the material or equipment that you have and the stock is uh, what you have raw uh, material or equipment, but they are for the sale, the sold, the sale. Okay, very interesting. Inventory <laughs> and stock. So, <laughs> yes, go ahead. It's possible that stock is all that have to sell stock and inventory is all that report for um active i don't know uh, how do you say active oh i don't remember that's it's less on liability i don't remember right now an access. active asset, that's asset. yeah yes asset. Asset. yes and um, in inventory is to all access of a company okay very good now we're getting there, nice. So the difference is that inventory is the raw materials, also the products that are in process, that are not finished. And stock are all the finished products, only the finished, the ones that are ready for you to distribute, sell, or whatever you want. So that is the uh, only difference. So it says either running out of stock at the wrong time or carrying too much stock and thus in decreasing cash flow. So what it says here is that it's a problem to, to be out of stock, so not to have enough product to sell, or to have too much stock. A lot of product is not good either. And also, I mean, either or any of these situations are going to decrease our cash flow. What is the cash flow? Is if is the cash available uh, for the company for use um, for pay or investment for the purchase? Perfect. That is it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Salmi. So the cash flow is all the flow, all the cash that we have uh, ready for you to use to pay. Uh, for you to purchase more raw materials or anything like that. So it's a big impact in the financial sector of the company, the um, bad management of a warehouse. So it's going to be a huge impact. And it says while increasing expenses to warehouse extra material, definitely. So let's continue. And the first one, uh, well, it says Tim Garcia, founder and CEO of a city and developer of enterprise solutions offer a list of the top five warehousing challenges that can be addressed through automation. So there are five different challenges where if we implement automation into that processes or procedures or the warehouse, you are going to get rid of that one. So automation is key on this one. Okay, the first one is going to be read by Lo Urdes. Okay. Inventory accuracy. Okay. okay. Inventory accuracy when manufacturers don't have full visibility to their inventory, they face the problem of 
either running out of stock at the wrong time or carrying too much stock and thus decreasing cash flow while increasing expenses to warehouse extra materials. Of the two challenges, Garcia says, the greater problem is inventory shortage, which can lead to unfulfilled orders and unhappy customers. Good. What do you understand on this one, Lourdes? Hmm. I understand uh, when the manufacturers um, when the manufacturers uh, don't don't have a, a good control in in this warehouse because um, in some occasion we uh, they they have a lot of stock in in this warehouse and the sales decreasing uh, for many situations and when when the when the stock is very high uh, also have problem the manufacturers because uh, the cost of almacenaje storage storage because of storage or because a uh, about uh, the product uh, stay in the warehouse a long time and the product have a, a expiry date uh, and the expiry date is near, for example. Okay, very well, and perfect. It's... Thank you. So let's verify on this one, inventory accuracy. So, do you remember what is accuracy? Exact precision. Very good, precise. Exact amount of something, right? So, when manufacturers don't have full visibility to the inventory, so that is the first part. So, if you as a manufacturer don't know what your inventory is, two things might be happening. You are going to be out of stock or you are going to have too much stock. So that's what you need to see. But of course, it's not that you will go every day to the warehouse and see what is going on. So you, you need a system. So on the computer, you can go and check what is the percentage, how many of these I have, how many of these I need. So you can take the, the right decisions. If you don't have a system for that one, of course, you are not going to have the visibility and problems will arrive. So they face a problem of either, so there are two problems. So the cause is that the, the manufacturers, they don't, don't, they are not able to see the, in, the inventory, how much do they have? And the effect of that one is that they have um, no stock or too much stock. And of course, the impact of that one is decreasing the cash flow that we checked on that already, while increasing expenses to warehouse extra materials. So it's going to be um, uncontrolled. Of the two challenges, Garcia says the greatest problem is inventory shortage. What is shortage? When you don't have enough. Very good. Shortage is when you don't have enough. So for example, in Christmas, you don't have enough money to buy all the presents for everybody, right? So you're shortage of money. So shortage means that the, the worst problem is, okay, let's see if we understand this. What is the worst problem? 
to be out of stock or to have too much stock? What do you think? Be out of stock. Definitely, be out of stock is a problem because there are customers that they want to purchase. Do you remember that like three or two weeks ago we were discussing on how do you feel when you go to the supermarket and you look for a product and it's not there? The causes might be a lot of causes, but you, you reflect that into the product. You say, oh, this company, this product, I don't know what's going on. And then you change. So that is the risk. You need something and then you decide to purchase something similar, other brand. And then maybe you lose a customer. So it's a huge impact. It's not good. So, and the shortage, of course, can lead to unfulfilled orders and unhappy customers, as we were discussing. So people want the product, but we don't have the product. That is a big problem to say to our customers, I'm sorry, we don't have any today. Oops, okay. So let's move on to the number two. Ada Patricia, could you please read the number two? Inventory location. Lack from lack of inventory oversight can use a build up on inefficiency within the warehouse that slow operation and creates cost. Garcia says, without adequate insight into equation, pickers take for longer to find the, the items to ship, which is slow to the loading process and creates a vacuum in labor allocation and doctor is is scheduling. scheduling scheduling very good Ada. and what do you understand on this one no teacher no okay no so it says inventory location lack so let's check onto that word what is lack do you remember it's not the same luck that lack okay lack. don't have you don't have very good so when you don't have something right when you miss something about product services or anything actually this is for everything so lack of inventory so when you don't have inventory so that's why i was asking you what is the difference between inventory and stock so inventory is everything so if you don't have the raw materials for you to produce then you won't be able to have products, right? So the lack of inventory oversight can cause a buildup. What is buildup, do you know? Anybody? Build up, build up is something I think. Is something I growing up. Very good. That is build up. Build up is something that is going to add one and another and another level. So it's going to grow or to yeah to build. In a like a build in. A, <laughs> in or up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. It's like creating. So inefficiencies within the warehouse that slows operations. So this is the first cause. It's going to slow the operations if you don't have the raw materials or anything that you may want or you need. And increases costs, definitely. One, two, three more days that you have the product in the warehouse or that you don't produce, the goods are going to impact you in money. Without adequate insight into locations, pickers take longer to find the item to ship. So this is something that we have checked also before, right? You need to be fast in the way that you are going to go and pick products and deliver to the customer. That should be fast, efficiently. So five minutes, 10 minutes is going to be a big risk. Imagine five minutes, but imagine that the the persons that pick that one, they go to the warehouse 20 times a day. 
So that is more than an hour. It's a lot of time that is going to be wasted. It's not good. So which slows the loading process, of course, as we say before, if you have problems in one stage, it's going to affect the other stages. Everything is going to be working very slow and creates a backup in labor allocation and dog door scheduling. Backup, what is backup? Anybody knows what backup when you is? save information? Okay, regarding information is something like that to, to have something stored that is safer. Any other opinion? Oh, it's possible replacement, replaces making for getting information in the drive. Okay, yeah, backup is like keeping like a, like, how can you I say? To, um, it's like a, a backup. <laughs> you you duplicate information. In Something like that, yeah. Uh -huh. so. In a backup, you may a duplicate of the information. Mm -hmm. Very good. And you store it in a different place, just mm -hmm. in case, yeah. right? Uh, in this case, it's backup in labor. So that means that people are going to be there doing nothing, right? So that is not good. It's expensive for you. In labor allocations and dog door scheduling, of course. Dog door means that the, the process to put the items on the dock and send, deliver it to the customer, uh, that is dog door. And scheduling, of course, you know, that is about time and planning things. Number three, uh, let's see, this is for Osmin. Oh, right, it's here, it's here. <clears throat> Great teacher, excuse me. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Number three. Mm -hmm. Space utilization, warehouse layout. It's not about how much space you 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 have. It's about optimizing that space to avoid un, un, unnecessary labor. Keep fast moving and and high ceiling inventory near the front of the facility to let truck driver are in constant, constant traveling to the park reach of the warehouse. Very good. What do you understand in this one? I may be The important is how I spray the system for for the inventory. The important is uh, for most facility. Okay, very good. So yes, space utilization and warehouse layout. So here we have two things. The space utilization is the way that you use the space in the warehouse. And the warehouse layout is the way that you design the warehouse. So you decide where to put one thing or another thing. So that is that part. So it says it's not about how much space you have. It's about optimizing that space to avoid unnecessary labor. So it's optimizing, what, what do you remember? What is that word? Optimizing is uh, a good No, 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 how clear the idea. Okay, optimizing is when you want to get the maximum of something with all the resources that you have, so you have more of those. So it says that space to avoid unnecessary labor. 
So what is to avoid, anybody? Avoid is evitate. Very good, when you evitate something. So avoid unnecessary labor. So avoid to people to work more. Keep fast moving and high selling inventory near the front of the facility. So let's check into that one. Fast moving and high selling inventory. What do you believe is fast moving inventory? Sell fast. Okay, yeah, actually both are related, right? So fast moving means that something that you can move very fast. So you have to put the items in a way that you will be able to move them in a very good way and fast. High selling is something that, uh, goods that will be able to go to the consumer very fast. Uh, it says near in front of the facility to lift truck drivers are in constantly traveling to the farthest reaches of the warehouse. What is the farthest? Anybody knows what is farthest? Is the what can I say? My God, farthest is a superlative. Yeah. Of course, it's a superlative of far. Very good, far, very good. So what we're going to avoid is that people go to the far of the warehouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end, <laughs> yeah, just to it's pick not something necessary, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you need to think about that one so you can save some money on this one. Good, for example, so, it happens, teacher, because we have some merchandise that are heavy, and all the time we are changing the, the, the place that they are located because there are seasons that we have a lot of movement or that kind of uh, that kind of product and we have to to change uh, to evitate to avoid that my partner my partners have to go uh, walk uh, a long distance to to get that is uh, selling with much uh, movement that is correct actually yeah that is something that we need to avoid not only because of the labor or the people that are working more but also for money right so that, that happens we need to be careful on this good the next one is going to be for sandra redundant processes redundant processes yeah please okay Mm. Ba barcode technology, or barcode technology. Garcia suggests can reduce or eliminate the problem of a big ticket or, or other documentation having to pass through multi multiple hands, e.g. A, a picker, a checker, a stanger, a loader. Very good. So, so, what do you understand on this one, Sandra? Uh, again, again, the same. Um, with documents. And repeat the step, step is necessary. Perfect, very good, that is it. So, so sometimes we need to avoid that specifically things so that you need to repeat procedure, procedure, or uh, when, okay, for example, in this one it says barcode technology. As you see on all the videos that we have seen about Amazon, about any warehouse in the world, they use labels with codes. So those are very important for you to track carefully what is going on. So it's going to 
provide the ability, uh, the ability actually for the for anybody to check what is where are the goods, what is the stage where they are, and to track everything. And it says that can reduce or eliminate the problem of a big ticket or other documentation having to pass through multiple hands. In mind, if we don't have a barcode and everybody has to write the number of a product by hand, oh my goodness, there will be a lot of mistakes, a lot of problems. I don't see any word here. Um, maybe what is a, do you know what is a picker, a checker, a stager, a loader? What is that? What are those words? What are those people? One, the one who received, the one who checked, the one who, oh my God, stager, stager. Um, and the one that, uh, the loader. Mm. I have a dog with those words, stay oh. here and load it. <laughs> okay. Actually, it's that uh, picker is the one that goes to the warehouse and pick the products, right? The checker is the one who, that checks check. that uh, the amount and the kind of product is fine. The stager is the one that is going to plan the way that is going to be sent to the destiny and which vehicle and things like that. And the loader is the one that puts the items into the vehicle. And of course, there are many other people that are involved. Okay, number five, it says speaking optimization. Floor, could you please help us? Speaking optimization. For warehouse that still has manual process in there tends to be no common role taken to pick items for shipment, which add unnecessary time to the process. Gracias size with system directed pick put way. The routing can be can be automate automate automated which will reduce wear and tear on equipment and the workforce. Good, what do you understand on this one? And the optimis, optimization is very important and for the reduce wear and the and say on equipment. Okay, very good. So picking is about the way that they are going to pick the items from the warehouse, right? So for warehouses that still have manual processes in place, mm, that is a very good question. Do you believe that there are still warehouses that have manual processes? What do you think? Just manual processes instead of scanners and automating processes. What do you think? I think that could it be teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Right. Yeah, maybe the new companies or companies that are very old and they don't want to invest mm -hmm. in systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah believe. for example, um, the boss, the, the general manager always say, 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 yeah, always say that we have to, we have to do that the system do the most of the thing. Because, for example, sometimes we made the things manual for a, a report, for example, the system have a report, but it's not the the ideal and we have to change some things and it's not correct because we can make mistakes that is true i mean it's not correct because if you enter a number 
that is not correct. Yeah, for example, also when when we take the, the cereals for the, the equipment, uh, sometimes because the cereal is short, we made, uh, we see the, the box and see the numbers, but we can make a mistake. That's the, that's the, that's the way the barcodes exist. But sometimes we have, oh my God, it's, I'm rushing, I'm rushing. It's, the, it's, it's important. And we do this and it can happen. That is true. So whenever you do something manual, there is a risk for you to make a mistake. And if it's not only one person, but a lot of people that enters into the process and do something manual, the risk is higher. So the probabilities for you to do a mistake are much higher. And uh, well, it says that whenever you, I mean, you need to uh, try to get a, a, an optimization on that one because if you do it manually, of course, it's going to be a problem. And the system directed pick put away, uh, the routing can be automated, which will reduce wear and tear. What is wear and tear? Anybody understands that? I never hear that, but I, I look at for that and I understand that means, for example, when, do you, when we use something and it's so old. I don't know yeah. how can you say um, desgastar uh, yeah. like that. That is uh, torn. You can say torn away, something like that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, wear and tear is something like that. Very good, perfect. So optimization uh, on this one, whenever we need to automate, is going to be the best option. So everything works properly. I remember also just thinking about what you say, Rose, that I used to work for a bank. Sometimes also the bosses, they make us do something like manual, right? Because, you know, um, he just... Well, I used to send reports and create presentations and things like that. And he uh, got together with us and we say, he said, I need a, a, a graphic like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, that has this information and this and this and this. I mean, we were working almost a week on that graphic and it was not possible. I mean, he needed too much information on the same graphic that at the end was not showing the way it should be. And we present some, some like other options, but he says, no, I want that way that I, I requested. So at the end, what we did is that we may manually withdraw one part of the graphics. So it's going to be all together. That was not correct, of course, because we did it manually. I mean, like, drawing but also when you trust by number like, yeah so i mean that might be happening so it's yeah, not sometimes a few a few years ago i make a mistake i put the coast bar and for my lucky the the company accepted the the, the quotation and it was wrong and I paid the difference. Imagine that's yeah. not good. <laughs> yeah, it happened. If you yeah. make mistakes, you pay the difference. <laughs> you pay, you pay for yeah. your mistakes. That is yeah. correct. <laughs> yeah, and well, actually, you know, you were kind of lucky. I remember also there in the bank that there was a, there was a person that was in charge of sending. Uh, we sent um, a report that it was the reserve the reserve the reservoir for the whole bank and some other depending on the liabilities and he sent that to the central bank but that has to be exact and she made one mistake only one mistake once and she got fired she has to go from the company so some sometimes there are some processes that impact that much that there are no mistakes to be accepted, not at all. Also, Good. when we take when we when we take the inventory, 
each uh, six months, we make mistakes because we are counting each and you can, it happen. Somebody count and make a mistake, put four and R3. Oh my God, it's, it's so, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so that is it. And as you, as you have seen that one, as we have discussed, that happen when you do manual things, right? Manual procedures. Yes, the system, sometimes they make some mistakes based on many other things, but it's less. And you can try to find where is the problem and try to verify that it's working properly. But um, it's more probably that if you do manual things, it's going to have a mistake. It's necessary teacher uh, to know root root uh, for uh, for the decision uh, to know process very good yeah definitely we need to identify what is the best route i mean even inside of the warehouse even if you are going to walk some steps you need to identify if this way you are going to walk 10 steps and then the other way you are going to walk five steps you need to change that one so that is important good do you have any questions about this little article okay so we're going to move on to the presentation so warehouse management fulfilling strategies Questions for everybody. What is a strategy? A strategy is a, like a master plan or plan of action or action plan, sorry action plan or proposed action. Very good, that is it. So the strategy is like a plan that you have in order to achieve something, right? That is a strategy. There are many ways to do something, but you are going to choose the best way, the one that is more efficient, the one that is the optimal way, and the one that is going to avoid to spend a lot of money. That is it. We're going to continue reading then. Uh, let's see. The next one is going to be for uh, the first paragraph only, Ophelia. Hello, teacher. I, wa I, want, I want to also man manage a fitness strangers. Selecting for me strangers, I does max. Max and the businesses I see in the volume and triple triple os order is receive can help at the organization cheese product faster mi, mini seeds waster and import customer satisfaction satisfaction Applying, pitching, picking, strategies. I does march. I the triple of order. I that you receive receives. I can has many many things. I the most effective uh, board 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 form for ex examples. Okay, let's stop there. Thank you. Uh, so it says warehouse management fulfillment strategies. Another word here that is interesting is fulfillment. What is fulfillment? When you have, when you have the product finished. Very good. The process to, to make a product and finish it. Finish. Very good. So when you have, uh, yeah, when you have everything that is done, so you will be able to handle the finished products. Good. 
It says selecting fulfillment strategies that match the business size and the volume and type of order it receives can help the organization ship product faster. So time and money is the most important here, definitely. When we're talking about logistics, when we're talking about warehousing, time and money, okay? And then it says minimize waste and improve customer satisfaction. So those three things are very important. Ship product faster, minimize waste, improve customer satisfaction, okay? Applying picking strategies that match the type of orders that you receive can help maintain the most effective workflow. So definitely, if we get the best strategy, you will be able to to have more money, to reduce the costs, to, to do many things, right? So the other one is going to be for, let's see, uh, Anna, sell me, please. The patch, the bullet, teacher. Yeah, please. Batch picking is a technique that can help you quickly fulfill multiple orders for the same product without wasting time by continually revis revisiting the same inventory location. What do you understand on this one? Is um, a specific methodolo methodology related to the, the order, the inventory for the same product and is efficiently because uh, the time in investing the process is less. Very good, perfect, yeah. actually that is it. Yeah, when you have batch, a batch is like a lot of the same it's product. It's a lot, that. yeah. It's the, it's the similar uh, characteristic or specification, the, 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 uh, the product and join in the same group. Very good, so that is it. So it's like, yeah, maybe not the same, but with similar characteristics or for similar destination might be. So you will be able to pick and you are not going to waste time about picking two, three, four. You take all of them and then put them away. So that will be a, a strategy, batch picking. So have a lot of the same products or similar products together so you can move them in a, in a faster way to pick them and move them. So without wasting time by continually revisiting the same inventory location. So that means that, yeah, if they are similar, you need to go to the same place once and again, so you can pick all the products that you need. Good. Uh, the next one is going to be for Guadalupe. Is some picking, a same picking to different some of SQs for each order. Picker are responsible for picking all SQs from their designated zone. Good. What do you understand on this one? I think it's the the number for the order or the item for, oh. for identify the maybe the style. Okay, very good. So this one is zone picking. Zone picking is different than batch. Batch is the amount of product. Zone means that we are going to assign in the warehouse different zones depending on the products that we're going to handle. So it's going to be easier for the pickers to go just to one zone and put uh, all the products 
and take all the products so you can deliver on that one. SKUs, do you know what is an SKU? It's the stop keeping unit. It's like a number or, or part of number, usually are numbers. <laughs> Very good. So it's key use. The code, uh, the teacher. Yeah, it's like the code. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a code for a specific product. So maybe you have mm -hmm. a lot of those products, but that is a, a, an SKU that is going to be assigned just for this product, this size, this amount. I mean, and uh, you might have a lot of these products together in the same SKU. That is it. And it says speakers, uh, there's a mistake there. Yeah, it's responsible, as she says, for picking the all SKUs from their designated zone. That is it. Good. Do you have any questions on this one? No questions. Okay, we're going to stop for a while and we're going to check the attendance. Let me check here. Let's see. Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Here, teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present, teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamez. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Veronica Vasquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good evening. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. <coughs> Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. And uh, Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Okay, perfect. So before we continue, I'm going to pause this. Okay, so now we're going to continue. Let me just check here. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to continue speaking about the strategies, of course. So the next one is going to be for, let's see, hold on a second. Pamela, could you please read the next? Uh, what? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, first expire. Uh, first expire, this one. Yes, please. First out, people picking insured, perish perishable products and items made its customer before specify expiration of sell by date. With BFO, the product says to expire first and ship it first. Good, what do you understand on this one, Pamela? Uh, really, I really can understand it. Okay, no worries. We're going to check into that one. So this is another strategy that actually is, is kind of popular. Is uh, something that maybe we all know about this. Fix, first expire, first out. It's a fee for, so it's going to be picking ensures perishable products and items make it to customers before specified expiration 
or sell by dates. So in this strategy, what we are going to get out of the warehouse for the customers is the one that are very soon to be expired. So we're talking about perishable products. Do you remember what is perishable? The date of this expiration. So there are products that if you don't consume them, they are going to be dead. They are, they are going to be ruined, broken, right? So like food, fruits, any other thing like that. So in this situation, in this kind of products, we're going to use the system. Uh, first expire, first out. So. Uh, what does it mean in teacher perecederos in Spanish? Yeah, something like that. Yes, perishable. Oh, okay. Perishable, yeah. So uh, with this system, the product set to expire first are shipped first. So it's very, very basic. I mean, you just need to be, uh, of course, in the system where you are tracking all the stock, all the inventory, you need to have that specific information, right? So you decide what products are going to be out first, the ones that are on the left, on the right, on the top, on this uh, aisle, so you need to have that information so you have this smooth and fast. Okay, the next one is for Jansi. First in, <clears throat> first in, fair out. I don't know people. <laughs> yeah, that is FIFO. FIFO. Speaking and sure if there's product to come to the warehouse at the players to be distributed distrib distrib which which can help make sure all their items are cheaping before they can become obsolete. Good. What do you understand on this one? Uh, I don't know how to get an idea. Okay, don't worry. That's why we are here. So first in, first out is the FIFO method. Maybe this is the most popular uh, strategy. So the first that comes into the warehouse, so the first that came, for example, in mind that we produce um, bottles and we have 100 bottles on Tuesday, 100 bottles today and 100 bottles tomorrow. So the ones that are going to go out first to the customers are going to be the ones that were produced on Tuesday. So the first in into the warehouse are going to be the first out to the customers. So that is FIFO. And it says picking ensure the first product to come into the warehouse are the first to be distributed, which can help make sure all their items are shipped before they can become obsolete, definitely. So there is another that is not here, I don't know why, or maybe it's on the next uh, slide, that is LIFO. LIFO is last in, first out. So it's going to be the opposite. So the last one that goes into the warehouse is going to be the first one that will be out for distribution. Now uh, it's not that popular, but yeah, some companies, they do this, uh, as I understand, is more based in the costs, in the, in the money that you invest. So you are going to have the more expensive out first, something like that. Good. The last part is going to be for Ricardo. Hey, teacher. Is that technology? Yeah, please. Okay, technology is also an important part, part of any warehouse manager, manage, management. 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 Fulfillment strategy. Handheld. Handheld mobile. They say that display perking. This which I eating locally. Serial number on um, those number can help increase increase picking, speak and 
accuracy. 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 Software can recommend traffic at the cost of effective parking based of product dimension to ensure it's eating great shipping. Security, which I believe was. Um, okay, no veo ahí. What, okay. Waste okay, space. So, waste space is possible. Very good. So let's check into this last one. Technology is also an important part of any warehouse management fulfillment strategy. As we discussed, right? A good software is going to help you manage this in a very nice way. Handheld mobile devices. What is handheld mobile devices? What do you understand on this? This machine teacher will take the code, the automatic, automat automatically. Okay, very good. So that is actually correct, Selmi. So do you remember the video where we were checking about the warehouse and the, the guy there, he had like a big cell phone or something like that. So he used for to scan the code bar and to look for different situations. So that is a hand, handheld mobile device. So you are going to carry that with you and you will be able to scan and send the system into the computers and everywhere there in the warehouse, the information about the products on that one. So that is a handheld mobile device that display packing list with item locations, serial numbers and lot numbers can help increase speaking speed and accuracy. <laughs> so definitely that kind of uh, situations are going to be very good. Software can recommend safe and cost-effective packing based on product dimensions to ensure each item gets shipped securely with as little waste and wasted space as possible. So definitely the system, the software that you have, it needs to be very good. It's a very good idea also to, to get, um, how can I say, to get a, a company that provides this software and that provides you also updates or that you are able to upgrade to the latest version. Because I mean, if you purchase a software that is going to be very old in five years, in 10 years, well, 10 years maybe is a good thing, but five years is, is too soon for that to be obsolete. So uh, whenever you are picking a good software company, you need to take in consideration that one as well. Questions on this one? I think that here in, in El Salvador, uh, be, be in the vanguard with the technology is, is very expensive, and, but it's necessary, I think. But some, some companies uh, maybe uh, those don't, don't want to, to invest in this kind of this kind of uh, technology because uh, maybe they don't have the uh, the money can can say yeah. but they know that are important yeah definitely sometimes that happens sometimes i mean to buy a software in ten thousand dollars twenty five thousand dollars is a lot of money of course that depends on the size of your business and the need that you have uh, it's an investment. It's always an investment, but sometimes we need to, to invest at the right time, right? So, but of course, if you want to be nice, if you want to avoid mistakes, problems with customers, you need to invest in a very good system. That is for sure. Okay, a warehouse monitoring and reporting. This is for Zulma. Okay, uh, warehouse monitoring and report. Measure and tracking key, key performance indicator, KPAs, operational stat, 
statistic, statistic that indicate how well the warehouse is operating can help pinpoint problems and highlight opportunities to improve efficiency and fulfill customer orders more quickly and accurately. For example, you can set a target for improved picking and packing accuracy, then make a change to your picking process and measure whether those changes are effective in helping you achieve your goal. Perfect. So what do you understand on this one? Uh, I think it's important you have a indicator or KPIs uh, for to know how, for example, what, what quantity you have in inventory of product or uh, how do you say raw material, for example, or a quantity of product you have ready to sell or how a quantity you order you have and you can uh, create a goal to uh, follow in the a company and you uh, and you see what is your performance very good perfect actually this part is one of the most important i mean everything is important but if you monitor what is happening in the warehouse so you i mean if you identify very fast a problem is going to be easier for you to handle it and that is going to be possible only if you monitor the warehouse if you monitor everything that is going on there not only about inventory but also about temperature about machines about the cleanliness of the warehouse and definitely reporting reporting for everything is important i mean uh, to understand what is going on what happened last month last week last year and compare it's going to help you taking decisions very good decisions so let's analyze measuring and tracking key performance indicator. So the KPIs are this, key performance indicator. So what do you understand as a key performance indicator? Teacher, and I understand the analyze the the difference areas in the company and uh, the evaluation, the res results. 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 Very good. So that is a key performance indicator. So, but some people that get confused. I mean, everything is possible to be measured in a company. We can measure how much time do you spend at lunch? We can measure how much time do you spend drinking coffee? How much time do you spend? Or what time do you usually come to the company? But that is not important for the company. I mean, if you spend three hours in lunch, of course it's important. But if you spend time, but you do your job, that is fine, right? But key performance indicators are more in the in the business itself, so but not any any rate. So it's going to be, for example, speaking about warehouse, uh, how many products were delivered correctly and in time. That is a very good key performance indicator. So for example, if we sent a hundred products and one was the one that it was not delivered properly or in time, your Key KPI for that one is going to be 99%. So 99% of accuracy when delivering a product is a very good thing. But what happens if we lost 
20 products that we do not deliver in time or was not delivered at any, uh, well, that is a problem. So these little indicators are going to tell you what you need to do. Do you need to change this? Do you need to move this? Do you need to do this uh, faster? You need to change uh, the vehicles. And many things can come from the key performance indicators, many things. Okay, and let's say operational statistics that indicate how well the warehouse is operating, of course. Um, can you help pinpoint? Do you remember what is to pinpoint? Anybody knows or remember what pinpoint is? Is when I watch the, uh, the problem exactly. Very good. When you indicate, right? When you point and you say, this is the, the important thing. So, so you can help pinpoint problems and highlights. So not only bad things, but good things. What we're doing not that well, so we can change it. And what we're doing very well, okay? To improve efficiency and fulfill customer orders. Let's see if there is any other word. I don't think so. Um, no, achieve, you remember what is achieved, definitely. Let's move on. So there are some warehouse KPIs that we, we can pick already. So they are already there. So warehouse managers often track the following KPIs among others. Uh, let's listen to um, Adriana. Could you please help with the first one? Yes, teacher. Uh, warehouse KP KPIs. KPIs. Uh, KPIs, <laughs> sorry, KPIs. Uh, warehouse managers often track the follow, following KPIs among others. Uh, rece receiving efficiency or, producti or productivity. The volume of good receiver uh, per warehouse opera operator per or uh, he, he, here, here, higher, higher, higher score indicate rated where you're receiving efficiency, 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 efficiency. I think it, while lower scores indicate that there may be problems that should be investigated. Good. What do you understand in this one? Okay. In this indicator is, is, for now, the efficiency, the products, the production, and and the the know the the business, the uh, how 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 uh, do you how do you uh, quantity the uh, production uh, for uh, for, for for warehouse um, and also um, uh, help um, and identify the problems and for solution that uh, for for solution the problem okay perfect thank you uh, yes, this is one of the most important KPIs because it's about the way that you receive the raw materials or other goods. So the volume of goods received per warehouse operator. So how many goods can an operator receive in a day, in a week, in a year, or per hour? How many will receive per hour? That is a very good indicator. So you are going to decide how much do you can you purchase 
how much can you move into the warehouse? And also regarding the space, if you know how, how many goods can you receive, for example, in a month, you will know how much space you need to have for them there in the warehouse. So that is very important. And look at what it says, higher scores indicate greater receiving efficiency, while lower scores indicate that there, that there may be problems that should be investigated. So when you see the percentages, right, and you see a low percentage, you know that there is a problem. Nowadays, it's even easier, right? Because if you have Excel or a Google Sheet, you can put colors. If this is more than 80% is green, if this is less than this one is red. So with the colors, you will be able to identify better what is going on and what you need to research on. Okay, the next one is going to be for Rafael. Hello, Rafael, are you here? He's getting some coffee, I guess. Okay, so it's going to be then for, let me check. For Flo. Oh, okay. Okay, Flo, Aha, uh -huh. who's gonna read? Receiving efficient or productive? Actually, it's the other one, picking a currency. Okay. Picking a course, the number of order currently picked dividend by the total number of order picked including incorrect or short orders, the closer to 100% accuracy, the better. What do you understand on this one? Um, but, but I, in my case, I relate relation in my work. Uh, uh, every month, the review uh, KPIs, the areas in general, because uh, it's important the medition, the the result. Definitely. So, the measurement of the results every week, every day, every month, every year is important. So we can identify, right? What's going on here? Why this is happening? It's very interesting that part. I really like that. I, I really like reporting because I can identify and improve procedures. So the same happens here, picking accuracy. So the number of orders accurately picked divided by the total numbers of orders. Of course, so it's like how well we handle these orders, right? So, and we are going to include the incorrect or short orders in the number of orders, of course. So if it's closer to 100, I guess around 97, 98, depending on the volume of your company, it's going to be fine. It's going to be good, okay? Uh, divided by, so yeah, there's no word here that I see that needs to be analyzed. Okay, the next one is going to be for, let's see, Ophelia. Hello, teacher. Bonjour. Responding live streaming, the other thing is talking, I force. I order to pressure customer when the order ha has been pressed for the price customer satisfaction. 
hay de shorter, de rare timing, de better. Good. What do you understand on this one, Ophelia? Um, uh, orden customer, um, the one. Um, I think. Okay, so this is regarding, uh, well, I don't know if you and your companies, you work with leads. Leads are very common when you're talking about sales or distribution or management of cases, things like that. So a lead is when somebody plays an order or sends a question or anything that needs to be addressed by the company. So the average time it takes for an order to reach a customer once the order has been placed, that is a lead. So that means that if somebody places an order today, I need to know what is the time that I have to take that order and handle the order. So some people, some, uh, well, here in Google, for example, we have that 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, if a company places an order or they are looking to, to get more information about a product, a project, or anything like that, we have 15 minutes for us to contact them back and ask more questions. What do you need? What do you want to implement? How much money would you like to invest? Get more information, okay? So for some other companies, of course, it's going to be different. It's going to be maybe one day, one hour, one week. I guess no more than one week, depending on the product, of course, uh, but it should be very fast. So if uh, you don't take that fast, customers are going to go to other place. So this is very, very important. And also this is part of the system. So you have a system, even if it's a, a website where when they place an order, when they click, I need this and this color and whatever, then you receive a lead. You receive an, an order for, for you to be fulfilled. So this is something that is very, very important. And it's one of the most important KPIs because it's related with the customers with the also, satisfaction. Go ahead. Sorry, teacher. I, I, I was uh, matching, matching if, I, if can I say, this when, when, when you go to an auto service, the logistic to dispatch the order in, in a, in a little, in a, oh my God, in a less time, yeah yeah uh-huh when you they have i think that they have time to 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 dispatch the order but you are not in the car uh and a half an hour <laughs> you have to be very fast that is true mm -hmm. actually that is a very good example i mean uh, if you cook in mind that you are going to cook a hamburger. In mind all the time, all the preparation that you do for you to prepare a hamburger. I mean, you go to the supermarket, purchase the ingredients, and then probably you check the recipe online, check what you need to do, and then prepare the meat, the vegetables, the bread, and then uh, start cooking the meat and then put everything together. I mean, for you maybe it's at least 30 minutes, right? 20, 30 minutes. But if you go to McDonald's, I mean, that is going to be very, very fast. So can you imagine the logistic of that kind of, of uh, companies where they have ready everything? They have the meat ready, the potatoes are ready. They have everything ready. You just go and place an order and move with your car to the other side. I mean, it's just a few minutes. Yes, it's, it's fast. It's very fast. For example, for example, the, the company we have, we have, we have to buy salary. We have to buy materials, and we send the 
the request to the purchase uh, department, they have 24 hours to to uh, to buy uh, the materials. And if they have, if they pass the time, uh, they the no the installations for a for a project is delayed because we don't have the product and they have to to do the things very fast that is true so yeah now maybe there is a very good exercise that you can do from now on we're speaking about logistics here folks whenever you go to a company you are going to measure how much time you spend there asking for information how much when, time when we go to the bank yeah that is we have to, oh my god that cafe is oh my god the cafe is at the bank no yeah, that, that is a lot of time. two hours yeah <laughs> too, too much time right yes too much time I think that they they have to do this i think <laughs> Also, the machine with the ticket. Oh my God! Uh, I think that it's it's count the time. I don't know, <laughs> but maybe. Oh my God! Yeah, actually, they have KPIs on that one. The way yeah. that they handle the customers. The problem maybe with the bank is well, there are many problems. So yeah. uh, the the but imagine that maybe not always is full, right? So if you go. At Tuesday, any Tuesday around 2 p.m. maybe is not that full, mm -hmm. but there are hours, for example, at noon and days. or in days, a Saturdays in the morning. I mean, is a, is a lot of people there because, I mean, if you work and you rest on Saturday, you say on Saturday, I will go to the bank, right? So a lot of people, they do that one. And another thing is that when you go and uh, are in front of the, of the teller, the bank teller. Um, I mean, they have to be kind. They have to smile. They have to resolve your issue. Uh, and if you have questions, they have to answer the questions. Uh, sometimes there are people that they spend a lot of time in that transaction. So uh, the poor guys there, they are stressed, but they have to be also nice with people, so. Yes, also, also we have to, to prepare a request uh, because the the client isn't the this the sala de ventas I forget that word my god the sales the sales uh -huh. yeah the sales we have time we have to run because we we have time also at the warehouse uh, we we use this this method yeah the the KP the KPAs. API. Yeah, we, we use that. We have to we have to take the time for many things. Yeah, time is very important. So of course, as we say, every every industry, every company is different. So for example, as we well, that is a good exercise that we can do from now on. When you go to a company, analyze, analyze the logistics, how fast they do this. And of course, maybe there are um, many things on the back that we don't see, right? Uh, for example, in McDonald's, I know that they bring everything, they put together everything, they have everything ready. So they have to invest time. You can do this in the government offices. <laughs> oh my goodness. That <laughs> no, is totally different. Doesn't apply. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, at least I have seen that it's not as it was in the past. <laughs> Um, has improved maybe it's not the best yet but at least in some parts for example when i go to the city hall and require something it's kind of fast yeah kind of also in immigration is very i think that was very fast yeah yeah okay at, and, at this oh yeah the city hall yes it's fast yeah, it's fast mm -hmm. uh -huh. so this is fast okay mm -hmm. but maybe there are some other places where I mean, you waste your time and also your patience, right? Oh, because... sometimes, I, I don't remember the last year, I went to a city hall and was a lot of people waiting to enter because it, it wasn't the time. But uh, the the person at the, at the entry uh, very kindly say, come on, get in. And we pass uh, very fast. And one of the employees say, wait 
I'm I'm not oh, I I was so happy, so laughing because the the person the, the employee say wait I don't I don't like to work under pressure oh my god <laughs> imagine that thing <laughs> yes it was very funny for me what oh my god I don't like to work under pressure oh my god <laughs> That's not good. And welcome to the club. You can say here we <laughs> we do that every day. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There are different situations. So, for example, when you go to the doctor, right? That is uh, that is some comfortable because you are in pain. You need you need assistance, but you have to be there in line. Uh, sometimes you need to fill some papers. Uh, I mean and you're waiting and the doctor comes in, goes out and you say, oh my goodness, when I'm going to be there inside checking on, the, on that one. And even worse, sometimes the doctor just asks two or three questions and says, here, take this and that's it, goodbye, right? So there are different situations, different ways for you to, to face the customer, different ways of you to handle many things, so. Good, interesting. Any question on these uh, KPIs that we have here? What other KPIs do you have in your company? In my case, teacher, uh, we, we use indicator of accidentability. So like accidents that happens to people when they're working? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. That is like, I remember there was a name for that one. Um, industrial security, right? Yes. That is it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very important. Depending on the job or on the kind of industry. Yeah, that is very, very yeah. important. Good. Any other KPI that you have in your companies? In my case, teacher, one. KP, KPI I have is the rate per, per hour because so, I have a budget for each engagement. And if I, um, I spend a more time, my rate per hour is less than the, the, the compared with the, my goal. I see, that is interesting. <laughs> so, but that means that you need to, uh, well, I guess that you have certain tasks that you need to do and you know that how many tasks you have to do per hour, something like that? Yes, the estimation of the time is very important in the pen of the com comple complexity. Complexity. Complexity of the engagement. Okay, very good, very interesting. Anybody else wants to share about their KPIs? In my case, teacher, uh, they measure me the payment hit rate and my Auditive is all payments must be paid on time in the month. Okay, that is very interesting. Very good KPI, nice. So yeah, I guess nowadays all the companies, they have KPIs, right? So we need to adapt them, we need to understand them. Sometimes uh, it's not possible to hit them, but we try our best, very good. Um, let me check what will be the best, the next step. Uh, well, yeah, these are also kind of the same thing. So we're going to check these KPIs. Let's see who's going to be the next. Ada, Patricia, could you please write the rate with the rate of product return? Rate of product return. The rate at which so goals are returned a return by customer calculate by dividing the number of items returns by the number of items sold. 
to get a full picture of the key KPL, it's important to consider what products are being returned. A customer accidentally ordering the wrong product might not signify warehouse operation ensues, but there is room for improvement if customer often receive incorrect products or damaged goods. Good, what do you understand on this one? No. No, okay. So this is a very easy one. The rate at which good, sold goods are returned by customers. Calculated by dividing the number of items returned by the number of items sold. This is very, very simple. It's just a division. So of course, it says here that is, it doesn't mean that if you receive back, if you get a product returned, uh, you are bad. Sometimes that happens because of many reasons, but you need to research, investigate why this is happening so you can improve. Uh, let's see, uh, consider what's being returned. Let's see if there is any word. Um, yeah, there is says, might not signify warehouse operation issues, but there is room for improvement, okay? Or damage, okay, there is no other thing here. The next one is going to be for Lower this. Hello, lower this. She's at the supermarket. Okay, Pamela. Sir, can you oh. hear me? Very good, I can hear you now. I thought you were outside or something. Okay, could you please help us reading about inventory turnover? Okay, only the screen for me is shared. Okay, inventory turnover. How much inventory is sold and replaced in a given period of time? It's calculated by dividing the total cost of goods sold during the period by the average cost of inventory during the, that period. This KPI reflect how efficiently a warehouse managed inventory to meet demand. In general, higher inventory turnover is better. If a warehouse overestimates demand, inventory turnover may be low. Too much slow selling inventory can be costly, especially for businesses dealing with goods that have a predetermined shelf life. Uh, I under understand uh, in this paragraph, uh, give a solution with inventory and the solution is calculated by dividing the total cost of goods sold during the period by the average cost of inventory during that period. Uh, this, this way uh, for the author of the the book in help a uh, 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 manage uh, inventory because when you divide the total cost of goods sold during 
uh, for example, a year, you estimate uh, the good way. And uh, it, this, this calculator help, uh, help especially the predetermined shelf life. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, inventory turnover is one of the most important for warehouse. That means that we are going to measure how is moving the products inside of the warehouse. How, how many products are going out, how many products are there, how many are sold and replaced by a given period of time. So uh, of course it's a division and uh, question for you, what is an average? Anybody knows what an average is? Nobody. I know this is difficult sometimes to, to tell. It's the calculation of the, um, be, between the universe, uh, of the amount of, you divide divide um, between the the for example the number of the items and the number is the it's, it's not right the media the media in English is, is the social a media midpoint. and communication I'm sorry Josie like a midpoint Yes, <laughs> point. <Okay>. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's so difficult. It's so difficult to express, but I have yeah. the yeah, average idea. is aver is average. It's yes. average. <laughs> average is average. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, actually, sometimes that's why I'm asking you these specific questions. I know that you know, but to express that one is yeah. a different level of English, right? In a financial way? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the way, in a financial <laughs> way. Oh, my God. <laughs> but the good thing is that you see that you are doing it. So if you are able to express that one and we are able to understand, everything mm -hmm. is fine, right? Very good, very good. So an average cost of inventory during the period and it says reflects how efficiently the warehouse manages inventory to meet demand. Uh, let's see, turnover, there is no other words. And I believe you understand here, what is this about? The slow selling inventory. Yeah, shelf life, that is the other one I was, I remember that it was about. What is shelf life? Anybody? It, huh? it is the life of a product. Okay. Is the life of a product a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh -huh. mm, um, the YouTube life. <laughs> you can say it's like duration. Something like duration. In this case, it's like the life that a product can be there inside of the warehouse. So it's just like that, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, let's see what is the next. Oh, 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 yeah. Statistics. Okay, we're not going to check that today. That is going to be for tomorrow. That is going to be special class. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we have a few minutes, so we're going to practice, free practice today. So what we are going to talk about, um, what is the best food for these vacations that are coming? What do you eat for Holy Week? Uh-huh. Seafood. Seafood, very good. So like fish or what is your favorite seafood? 
Any time? Or how, how do you say, I don't know, how do you say camarón? Shrimps. So shrimps are very good. Yeah, that is true. What else? In my case, teacher, uh, my favorite food for this season um, is the uh, the first dish is the how do you say tortas de pescado fish fish and, fish balls I guess because yes, it's not fish meatball. <laughs> but in a specific, uh, how the, the, the specific preparation in the west of the, the our country, in the Sulutan, okay. we Car. prepare, <laughs> yes, we corn, yes. and put the fish, and, and then, how you say, and ball with eggs, and fry, and after the special, it's not it's not sauce. It's the I, I don't know what it's is like, the it's it's like a juice. recaudo. <laughs> it's like gravy. I don't know. Gravy. Yes, gravy. In specific. Something like that. Got, I think they say in English garbanzos. I don't have an idea on that. Yes, a lot of garbanzos. <laughs> okay. And garbanzos. I love it. The dessert. The, the mango, cocote, okay. and marañón. It's okay. my favorite. My goodness. So this vacation are coming with everything of that. So it's going to be yes. very nice. <laughs> All celebration, only food. Yeah. Very good. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess we need to we need to take advantage. Sometimes, you know, life changes. Do you remember the last two years that we were not able to go out? So right now, if we have the chance, we need to go and do it. What other foods? Anybody else's? Uh, uh, very good. So that is very nice, right? Oh. It is delicious, I know. I, I really like that as well. Yeah, very good. Any other? Torrejas. Torrejas, very good. That is like from Spain, right? It's a dish that came from Spain. Good. What else? The traditional teacher. In English, it sounds like funny, I think. Mango is in honey. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yeah, those yes. are very good, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. For sure, for sure. Yesterday after the class, I made torrejas and I take to my partners because I promised them. <laughs> but wow. I promised. And yeah, today I, I take I take uh, to I no, I share I share with them the the torrejas. <laughs> they were so lucky. That's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you did that at night after the class? Yes, after the class. I finished at around 11, 11 oh, p.m. 11, yes. Yeah. That was... <laughs> yes. Yes, I was it was funny. Okay. I I enjoy. <laughs> That's nice. Torreja yeah. with coffee teacher with milk. Delicious. With milk, I never taste that with milk. Is it good with milk? Oh yes, amazing! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm gonna do that this year. That's nice. Yes, <laughs> cold milk, <laughs> cold milk and torrejas. Nice. Yes. <laughs> okay. Any other food that or any other tradition that you do for these days? Tamales, teacher. Biscuits. Yeah, those are very good, right? With tomato sauce. Ah, yes, with tomato sauce and beans. Yeah, with the beans in, in the middle. Yeah, those are very, very good. <laughs> yes, delicious. I'm hungry already again. <laughs> 
Okay, very good. Any other that you want to share? I have hungry. Yeah, me too, you know. Uh, actually, I'm going to check what, what can I eat after the class. <laughs> Not rejas because we don't have that but anyways. <laughs> this, is, this is the season for, for mangoes. Mangoes? And we eat a lot of mango, but I prefer the juice of mango. Ah, I don't juice. like I don't like to to eat the, the mango because you no know, mm. my teeth are I don't know. <laughs> but what about the ones that are big and yellow and oh and... that's that's one yes but the green mangoes no yeah the, me only too. with only juice yeah the, the green ones I can eat just a little bit uh, mm -mm, not no. that much. Mm -hmm. But the yellow ones, those are very good. Yes. With a little. Cocotes are very good as well. Yeah. Yeah. Here in El Salvador, we are very lucky, right? We have a lot of things that are amazing, and that even if you go to the best restaurants in Europe, you are not going to have that. So. To, to Ayote. Oh, that is another one, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, in that... teacher, we we are very lucky because in the case of the mangoes, we have a lot of kind of the mangoes. Yeah, that is a true. A lot of the kind. In the land of my uncle, is mm -hmm. is small. If there are twenty one kind of the mangoes. Imagine. Twenty varieties. Yes, yes, that, that is incredible. For me, it's yeah. amazing because is we are very lucky. Yeah, that is true. I, mean, I am. I eat all us Yeah, yeah. That is, that sounds like like a tour, right? Let's go and try twenty one kinds of mangoes. <laughs> My <Yeah>. God. <laughs> That sounds very interesting, very good. Okay, perfect, it was very interesting. So uh, remember tomorrow is going to be at seven and I'm going to check the attendance so we can go and rest a little bit. So uh, Ada, Patricia Linares Galdamez. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. She's here, I see. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present, teacher. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good night. Night. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Presentation. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present, teacher. For you is the, I yeah. know, uh, uh, you were the one, one last night. Very yes, good. Yeah, that's true. William yes. Giovanni Rosales is the one for today, but he's not here. Uh, Jan Silisbeth Hernández Mejía. Not here. Zulma Rosaura Lopez Garcia. Present. Okay, so now for you is the 101, Zulma. Okay. Nelson Edgardo Sanchez Ramirez. Ana Michelle Guevara. Susana Carolina Hernandez Iraeta. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be here with you. Have a very good night. Rest very well. Dream in English and see you tomorrow. Hey, good night.
Okay, hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Very nice. So, well, the, um, I know that you have experience in the one-on-one. So the first question is, how do you feel that you are moving on with English? Do you think that you're learning, that you're getting some vocabulary? How do you feel? Yes, I think uh, we learn uh, many vocabulary, new vocabulary. Uh, the themes is about factory, but uh, I think is applicable in other companies. For example, uh, that we learned today the KPAs is applicable in the bank, for example, in school. Okay, I'm very happy that you are learning something. And, uh, um, do you have any questions about the topics or grammar or anything? Uh, not only with one of the uh, homework in the platform. Okay. Um, let me check. Of course. Is when you use uh, as in the... Uh, uh, Yeah, just let me know what is the exercise so I can check into that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think is when I miss a, a class and <laughs> this one where I can't finish. Okay. I'm trying to um, find it, but I just can't find it. Is that in unit one or unit two? Um, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Checking into that one. I think it's in number one. But I can't. Yes, I just can't uh, find yeah, it. Yeah. So were you able uh, to find it? Is, uh -huh. Yes, is homework 1.7. Okay, let me check into that. I only can complete number four. 1.7, let me go there. Mm, okay, yeah. This is the one that some people were asking about. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes. So the number one, uh, it should mm -hmm. be uh, retailers help well the number one do you have that correct no okay. I, I write retailers as full seller help you produce much profit i understand uh, no because remember that we're going to compare two things when we use as and us is when you are going to compare two things but if it's affirmative it's going to be the same so, for example, mm -hmm. if we say, I have as many cars as my neighbor, that means that my neighbor and me, we have the same amount of cars. Uh, oh. And yeah, if I use a negative one, uh, I can say, for example, um, El Salvador doesn't have as many scientists as the United States. So that means mm -hmm. that the first one is less than the second one. 
So let me tell you, the first one is going to be retailers help you produce, let me see, produce as much profit mm -hmm. as wholesalers. Much profit. Uh, uh, yeah. So you see the structure? The structure is important. Yeah. Yes, I only. Okay, the number two has a problem. I mean, the correct one, uh, the correct one is the shipment will be delivered mm -hmm. as soon as the payment is received. The problem here is that even when you put that correct, the system mm -hmm. is not taking that one. So, and mm -hmm. nobody has this correct. This uh, um correct. Okay, so number three, do you have that correct? Uh, I write product transportation is a strange capacity as expensive. I know, in this case, expensive is the adjective. So it's going to be, uh, let me just check. It's going to be product transportation is as expensive. Is as, uh, as expensive as, as storage, storage capacity. capacity. Yeah. So uh, the, yeah, the word that you are going to use there in the middle is going to be either an adverb, either an adjective or uh, a noun if you are talking about many or much or something like that. Okay. Okay, number four, do you have that correct? Uh, yes, uh, okay. some channel distribution strategies are not as efficient as others. Very good, what about number five? Uh, no, this is incorrect. Okay, so that should be selling our digital courses uh, through mm -hmm. a store is not as profitable as distributing them online. Uh, selling our digital course through a store Mm -hmm. uh, store, uh -huh. is profit. not no, it's uh -huh. not it's not because the verse should be there it's not okay. as profitable as distribution okay. uh, distributing them online uh -huh. them online okay thank you I um, actualize the platform very well. So that is very important. So we can move on to the next level. Okay. Do you have any other question? No, it is only. Perfect. It was a pleasure then uh, to be here with you. Have a fantastic night and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Good night.